In this short video, I'm going to talk about an example of hydrostatic pressure distribution and how to calculate the magnitude and the location of the resultant force as a result of hydrostatic pressure distribution. So we have a tank of water, and then here there is a circular plate. We want to calculate what is the resultant force as a result of the hydrostatic pressure distribution on this circular plate. So the first thing that I want to do, I want to sketch a better picture of our my problem. So this is a circular plate. And let me actually show you, this is a circular plate like this, right? But when you, I want to take a look, a side look at this problem from this direction. So it would be if the surface of water is right over here, and I'm looking at uh, the side of this gate, the side of this gate is going to be, I'm going to turn it so it would be something like this. So what you see, although this is a circular plate, when you look at it from the side, because it has a specific thickness, you see it as a rectangular area, right? So this would be the circular gate when I look at it from the side. Okay, now I need to um, apply the pressures on top of this. And that would be actually pretty easy. So because the pressure over here, the magnitude is going to be this, and the magnitude here is going to be higher. So this is essentially your hydrostatic pressure distribution. Okay. And the cent centroid is going to be right in the middle of the circle, right in the middle of the circle. And the center of pressure is going to be a little bit lower than that. So what I want to find is the magnitude and the location of this resultant force right over here. This is vertically submerged underwater. Remember from the previous video, whenever we have a vertically submerged plate underwater, h bar is equal to y bar and hp is equal to yp because it's vertically submerged. Okay, so let's go back to the main equation. So when we want to calculate the magnitude of resultant force, that would be gamma. In this case, we have water. So gamma of water times h bar times area of this plate over here. This plate is a circular plate. so area of a circular circular plate is going to be pi r to the power 2. Okay, I'm going to put the numbers right over here. Gamma of water, 9810. H bar. H bar is the depth from the surface all the way to centroid. And the centroid is right over here. So h bar, we do have that value to be 3 meters. And then this value is h sub p that we will find later. Okay. So h bar is 3 meters times area. Diameter is 2 meters, so radius is 1 meter. 1 to the power 2. So if you calculate this value, it will give you 0.5 Newton, or we can write this as 92.5 kilonewton. Okay, so this is the magnitude of the force that is acting on this circular plate. Now, the next thing that I want to find is the location of that. And the location would be h sub p. Okay, so h sub p. If you don't know why, I instead of writing y bar, I wrote h bar. You should watch the previous video that we talked about the theory of this. Okay, so we do have the value of h bar. We do have the value of cross-sectional area. The only thing that we don't have is i bar or uh, moment of inertia for a circular plate. So for a circular plate, if you take a look at your book, it will give you the value of pi times r to the power of 4 divided by 4. Take this and put it in this equation and calculate 
the depth to center of pressure. Over here. Here it is also over here. So when you calculate this, it will give you the value of, as we expected, the center of pressure is going to be a little bit lower than uh, the centroid of this shape. So HP, as we expected, is going to be a little bit larger than 3. So in this problem, we calculated the value of HP, center of pressure. We also calculate the magnitude of the force that is acting on this um, surface. Let's take a look at another example. All right, so in this example, we have a reservoir which is filled with water, and there is a gate that is connected to the end of this pipe over here, and this gate has an elliptical shape, and the pipe is a circular pipe with a diameter of four meters. So we know that the center or the centroid of this is going to be right in the middle of it. By the way, the elliptical shaped gate is going to look like this. So if I want to show it to you, it would be something like this. The centroid is going to be right in the middle, and then we call this distance little b, and then this distance is going to be little a. So if I want to write to you what would be the moment of inertia for this elliptical shaped gate, it's going to be pi divided by 4, a to the power 3, times b. You can find this in your textbook as well. Okay, so we do have this. Uh, what we want to find out is the magnitude and the location of the resultant force on this elliptical uh, shaped gate. So I know that the resultant force, this is the centroid, is going to be acting on the center of pressure. So I'm going to find the magnitude and also the center of pressure over here. Find that as well. Let's start with resultant force. So FR, the equation for it is gamma of W because our fluid is water, H bar times area. Okay, so let's first of all talk about H bar. H bar is the depth from the surface of the fluid, in our case water, all the way to uh, the centroid. So I need to, this says 8 meters, obviously I have that. I just need to find this. If I find this, then 8 plus this would be h bar. And that's pretty easy because this is a circular pipe. So, and because the centroid of this elliptical shape is right in the middle of it, this is going to be 4 divided by 2 or 2 meters, right? So in, uh, in my case over here, h bar is going to be 8 plus 2 equals 10. All right, the next thing to find is area. What area? The area of this gate. This, again, from your textbook, the area of this elliptical-shaped um, gate is going to be pi times A times B. Okay, that's easy to find. So A is half of its length, and I know that its length is 5 meters. So half of that is going to be 2.5. And B is going to be equal to the diameter of this pipe, which is 4. So B is 4 divided by 2, because it's half of it. So it would be pi times 2.5 times 2, or 5 pi. This is the area of the gate. Okay, so area is equal to 5 times pi. Now, if I want to write this, And the resultant force eventually will be equal to all right so we have the magnitude of the force that is acting on this the next thing that I want to find is um, the location okay so the location right now take a look at this gate this gate is not vertical right so when the gate is not vertical is slanted I need to find yp, and yp is equal to y bar plus i bar divided by y bar times area. Okay, so now I need to find the value of 
y bar. So I know that um, y bar is has a relationship with h bar. So essentially, h bar is equal to y bar times sine of theta. And theta is this angle or this angle, right? So sine of, sine of theta in this example would be, okay, this would be 4 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5. So 4 divided by 5. Um, and this is sine of theta. So in order to find uh, y bar, I can write it like this. So the h bar was 10. Okay, great. So this is y bar. Now, I'm going to put the y bar in this equation, and I'll also have the value of i bar right over here. So it's going to be like this. Okay, so this term over here, if you calculate this term, it gives you the value of 0 0.125, 12.5 plus 0 0.125, yp essentially would be 12.625 meters. And this would be the value of yp that um, we calculated. Now, if you want to calculate the value of hp, and hp would be this depth from the surface right over here, this is hp. So hp would be equal to yp times sine of theta that we have over here. I will let you to calculate this. Okay, so in this video, we talked about two examples to understand how we can apply the hydrostatic resultant force and how to find the location that the hydrostatic resultant force is acting on.